Um, last uh, classes we have gone through the architecture of 8086 and the pin configuration. Now, it is time to learn programming. It becomes quite convenient having known the architecture to go through the instructions. Now, before going to the instructions at in detail, we would like to really talk about what is assembly level programming and how we proceed with that. Assembly language consists of a set of instruction that tells the computer what to do. It means that it is a direction that is being given so that the assembler would really perform the required conversion of the given code for the machine to understand. So, assembly language programming is a set of instructions and this particular instruction is converted to the machine language to perform the required operation. An assembler converts the assembly language to machine language one to one, it is being indicated in this particular block diagram here. Say for example, mu ax comma cx, what it says is converted to the binary equivalent value by the assembler. Since the binary number is quite difficult for the user to read, it is now grouped into 4 and hexadecimal number is usually presented on the screen most of the time to make it convenient and henceforth we will be talking about each code in terms of hexadecimal number system instead of putting it in binary. But actually the assembler converts the each instruction that is being given that is the assembly language instruction to its equivalent binary value and to make ourselves convenient to understand we put it in hexadecimal number. What is the advantage of learning the assembly level language? So, assembly level language makes it much more convenient for the user to really program to the machine and it is opt and it becomes optimal especially when it is being programmed and most of the programmers would like to use the assembly level language uh, and uh, write small routines, call these some small routines from the big uh, program, programming language. The advantage of trying to do this is the speed of operation will be much faster and we have a better control over the program. Assembly language subroutine can be written to handle operations that are not available in higher level language. There are certain routines which is not possible for us to write in higher level language and such circumstances assembly level language is being used. Now, let us talk about a simple instruction called mu and then discuss one more instruction see how it can be programmed and what is the procedure for programming and what are the intricacies we have and how do we direct or inform the assembler to do a particular operation and what are the assembler directives will be studied in this particular class. So, a MU instruction basically has two operands and the first operand is the destination and the second operand is the source. That means that whenever we are trying to mention any instruction along with the MU mnemonic, we have the destination operand mentioned followed comma followed by the source operand. It means that the content of the source is moved to the destination and this process is true on all Intel processors. Now, destination and source can be either register to register transfer, it can be from accumulator to register and register to accumulator. Here when I say accumulator there is no specific separate register or accumulator, but AX register is considered as the accumulator in most of the applications. The reason is uh, the AX register has a special feature. When I am trying to talk about AX register, the time taken to execute an instruction when you are using an AX register is much lesser than any other register. So, to differentiate that the accumulator is much faster, I have explicitly mentioned accumulator and register in this particular table. So, the other destination and source registers are register and memory, memory and register, register and immediate data, memory and immediate data. One more minute on this particular point when we are trying to talk about the destination can be a memory or register, but the source when you are trying to say immediate only it can be at the source, but not at the destination. When you say immediate data, the data that need to be added or that need to be used in the instruction 
can be given at the source and from the source the data has to be moved to the destination for either moving the data or performing any operation. It is not possible to move a content of a register to an immediate data hence it is impossible to have a destination uh, having immediate data it has to be only the source. Similarly, it is possible to transfer from any register to the segment register and from the segment register to any register. The sum options of data transfer is not possible using move instruction they are immediate data into segment register. So, let me give a simple example to explain that why it is not possible whenever you use the move instruction and say move the data segment register say for example, data segment move the data say for example, 3214 hexa this particular data cannot move into the data segment register because the system does not allow the hardware designed by Intel does not provide you this particular operation you cannot use the immediate data to be moved into uh, the segment register. Similarly, it is not possible to move it into the flag register it is not possible to move memory to flag register the last memory to memory register using move instruction is not possible and whenever you are trying to talk about moving the data from memory to memory it is possible only in the string group of instruction which will be discussed later, but using a move instruction it is not possible to transfer the data from memory to memory. Other important note which has to be considered when you are writing a program size of the destination must match with the source what it means again another example let me talk about whatever is being said move for example, you want to move it into AL register say for example, 3211 hexa this 3211 hexa is a 16 bit data where the AL register is only 8 bits. Once we have an 8 bit register 16 bit data cannot move and hence there is an error it is not possible. Similarly, when you are trying to talk about moving the data from uh, AX register say for example, 32 hexa it is possible for you to move this particular data into AX register because the system considers the remaining higher order 8 bits to be equal to 0 and moves 0032 into hexa. So, at the end of this operation 0032 is moved into AX register. Now, these are important points that has to be noted because we need to really understand the process of the move instruction once you understand one instruction the remaining instruction becomes convenient as we go through the instruction set in the coming classes. Now, let us look into one more instruction called as the NAND instruction add instruction has two operands again which is called as destination and source add the mnemonic to add the contents of the source to the contents of the destination and store the result in the destination. So, that means that we are trying to talk about the destination is equal to destination plus source always the second operand that means that where the should be will be mentioned first the destination operand is mentioned first and later on the source operand is being mentioned. So, when you are trying to talk about this type of operation obviously, we are trying to talk about all registers A x, B x, C x, D x, A l, H l, A h, D h, C l, C h, B l, B h all registers are possible, but note here that some registers are 16 bits and some registers are 8 bits you can either consider 8 bit register for addition operation or 16 bit register for addition operation. So, we have here a set of instruction uh, uh, the uh, registers and the uh, memory that usually used for addition operation for example, register to register is possible, register to accumulator is possible. When I say accumulator it is AX register as I have already mentioned whenever I am trying to talk about accumulator the speed of operation is much faster and hence you explicitly mention as accumulator. So, we have accumulator to register possible, register to memory is possible, memory to register is possible, register comma immediate data that means that immediately the data available in the instruction can be added to the contents of the register and stored back into the register. Similarly, the content immediately added could be added to the content of the memory location and the data can be stored into the memory.
A simple example to add the content of AL register to the content of DH register and store into a result called data segment colon 1010. The reason why this particular program has been indicated with the logical address operands and uh, opcodes and operands and mnemonic and operand is to make you understand stating that how exactly the data is to be stored or what exactly happens when the processor is being executed. We have here code segment colon instruction pointer pointing to the first logical address where your program is to be executed. The program is very small having only 6, 8 bytes and so the, I am trying to say that the result can be stored in the memory location 1010. 1010 data segment call. So, that means that we have a separate segment register called as a data segment which has the value as 10 uh, where it is to be uh, stored altogether. Now, let us look at the particular procedure. The first instruction when it is pointing to 1000 colon 0100 it has mu al comma 57. This is a 2 byte instruction. So, the op code is B057 and the next location where the next instruction is being stored say for example, move dh comma 86 it is b 686 and the next one is add al comma dh. The last one where 1000 colon 0106 has the opcode and operand as a 21010 here the contents of al after the addition operation is stored into the memory location whose address is given as 1010. Since 1010 is known to us the problem says so we mention immediately in the instruction as 1010 within the square bracket. This process of writing the address directly in the instruction. We call this one as direct addressing mode. We will talk about the addressing mode shortly, but we are now interested in trying to understand how to write a simple program. As we go further, we will try to make it much more dif uh, difficult problems can be taken up. So, as you look at it, the core segment colon instruction pointer will be pointing to one particular code, it increments by 2 and gets the next code increments by 2, gets the next code for execution and then increments by 2 and gets the next 2 bytes and in the end the remaining 2 codes are being brought for its operation. Now, this is a simple program for performing an add operation. In the above example, what is the content of core segment instruction pointer before and after the execution of the program? So, as we have already looked into the code segment pointing towards 1000 colon 0100, the code segment will have 1000 and instruction pointer will have 0100. At the end of the execution, it is not 1000 colon 0106 because at the starting of the execution of the program, it will be 1000 colon 0106, but there are 3 bytes in the opcode and operand field. So, it adds 3 to it. So, the end address would be 1000 colon 0109. So, this is what is being mentioned here trying to make you understand stating that the increment takes place to get the next instruction for doing the operation. Representing address in the form of 1000 colon 0100 is called dash. This is only to recall your memory trying to say that whether you remember what you did last time I am just trying to give you a quiz it is the logical address. Similarly, the content of instruction pointer is 0100. So, 0100 is called dash address. It is the offset address. So, you cannot forget the fundamentals whatever you have learnt. You need to re recall and remember all this because they are all regularly used throughout the course. And how is the code stored into the memory? So, now we need to really understand how the data and the program is being stored. As we have seen earlier, there are some code which is being given in the second column and this code has to be stored into the memory. The way it is going to be stored is say for example, 1000 colon 0100 location B0 is being stored, 1 is 57, 2 is B6, 3 is 86 and so on. Now, that means that in each line has been the content that is shown in the memory is starting from B0002 that is saying that 1000 colon 100 to 1000 colon 010F 
is what would be the first line. Second line would be 1000 colon 1010 etcetera. So, this is how it is going to be stored into the memory and it is a continuous memory location where the data of uh, the code is being stored. Similarly, the data is also being stored in this particular manner. So, in the above example, the data was stored in the memory location data segment colon 1010. To enable the user to specify the data segment location, it is required to initialize the data segment. See, when I said data segment, the data segment is something where a user can initialize and store the data at that particular point. If you do not store data segment with any particular value, it so happens that it will have a default value and it stores somewhere, you will not be able to visualize it when you are trying to uh, debug the program. So, it is necessary to initialize the data segment. To, to initialize the data segment say for example, 2000 hexa, the instructions you use are move ax comma 2000 hexa, move data segment comma ax. Note the segment register cannot be loaded directly or immediately. So, let us look at what happens if you are trying to use the instruction in which immediate addressing mode is being used. The instruction can be written as move data segment comma say for example, 2000 hexa. The processor gives an error message, why should it give an error message? the assembler does not have a code for move data segment comma 2000. See that means that this can be any data, but there is no provision of using data segment uh, move data segment comma any immediate data, there is no instruction available in Intel and hence it gives you an error message. So, you cannot use an immediate addressing mode. So, the other way of trying to do it is move the immediate data into AX register from the AX register put in data segment. It is not necessary that it has to be always data segment uh, AX register, you can use any register altogether. The reason why I said AX is, AX is relatively much faster with the other register. Modify the program to initialize data segment to 2000 hexa and write the program. What I have done is I have added two more lines in the beginning trying to say that move AX comma 2000, move data segment comma AX and perform the required operation of adding AH and DL register and store the result in data segment colon 1010. At the end of the program, the result will be available at 2000 colon 1010 location. This is where the result will be stored after the execution of the program. Now, there is a simple another program, write a simple program to add 4 8 bits number stored in memory location 2000 colon 100. Assume that the memory available for writing the program is 3000 colon 0 a 0 0. Now, we have given two points, one is the data is stored in a particular location and the program has to be written elsewhere. So, the process of writing the program is saying that data is stored from 2000 colon 0100 to 2000 colon 0103. So, what we need to do is we need to initialize state to say that the data is available here. Assuming that the data is already available there, we write a program accessing the data from this location. So, we have here the instruction which is trying to say that uh, the, the memory location having these four data which is being stored in 2000 colon 100, 101, 102, 103. Now, the program says something like this move AX comma 2000, move data segment comma AX, move AL comma 00. The third line which is being said as move AL comma 0 0 is to make you understand that we are initializing the AL register with 0 0 to start with, because the content of AL may have some value as it is being mentioned earlier stating that it is AX comma 2000, obviously AX will have 2000, AL will have 0 0, but we do not want to take chances and we make sure that AL is loaded with a fresh value as 0 and then add AL with the memory location 0100. So, that means that the content of 2000 colon 0100 is brought and added with AL. So, add AL comma 0001, 0101 
and add AL comma 0 1 0 2 add AL comma 0 1 0 3. As you look into this particular program we are using the memory address 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 2 and 0 1 0 3 in the instruction itself. If the address is changed to some other location you may have to re change the program considerably. To avoid this particular problem what we do is we would like to initialize a register as a pointer and point to that particular memory location and access it. So, let us take SI register as a register as a pointer and use a special instruction called as increment INC. INC instruction is to increment the content of the register by 1. We will discuss in detail all the other instruction later since we are trying to learn the programming I have just introduced this particular instruction for the time being. So, as usual we are initializing the data segment register then what we do is we again initialize AL register with 00 and initialize SI register with 0100. We add AL with the contents of memory location whose address is available in SI and we increment the SI four times so that three times so that we get the required result in the AL register. How large is a segment register in 8086? Having understood the fundamentals till now I need to go back and try to talk about what is the size of the segment registers which we studied earlier. The each segment is about 64k segment memory is of 64 kilobytes. You need to know this because we will be talking about this in greater detail as we go further trying to say that at any instant of time the processor can access a maximum of 60 k byte of memory. Can the physical address be 346E0? Then what is the segment register content and the offset address? So, when a number is 346E0 is being given we need to understand what would be the contents of the segment register, what would be the offset. If the segment register is 346E and the offset is 0000, it is possible for us to get the physical address as 346E0. So, that means that this is possible to have 346E0 as the physical address. Now, just having looked into it, we directly say that the offset address is 00. You can also have 3400 as your segment register and 06E0 as your offset. So, there may be multiple answers for the same question, but as long as you understand the concept it is easy for you to answer all this. How is the memory allocated in a program uh, PC? See when you are trying to talk about a personal computer where you are trying to use the system for your operation. I am trying to talk about the general representation of 1 megabyte of memory. I am not talking about today's Pentium 4 or uh, Atenium processor as such. We are still talking about the old processor where we had only about 1 megabyte of memory when we are using 8088 or 8086 microprocessor. So, having looked into that we try to say that the memory location 00002 9FFFF which is equal to 640k of memory was meant for RAM. So, RAM is basically as read write memory where it is possible for the user to write a program there. There are other small space starting from A0000 to BFFFF which is 120k of read write memory. This 128k of read write memory is exclusively left for video display, but if you try to use this particular space your content whatever you are going to display on the screen gets disturbed. So, it is not preferable to use this particular memory. The last 256k of memory starting from C0000 to FF FFF is basically for read only memory where BIOS is being stored. So, as we looked into the pin configuration we said that there is a reset pin when the reset pin is made active the microprocessor goes into the T reset state. In T reset state as soon as the microprocessor comes out of the reset state it makes the code segment to be equal to FFFF hexa and the instruction pointer to be equal to 0000, 0000 hexa. So, we have code segment to be equal to FFFF 
f f hexa and instruction pointer to be equal to 0 0 0 0 hexa. So, the actual location from where the first instruction is drawing, being brought after the system is turned on or when you reset the system is f f f f 0 hexa location where we have the BIOS. So, I need to really mention here stating that it is necessary for us to understand that this particular ROM memory area is the space where all the uh, system routines are being placed. Now, we have been discussing about the memory and we have another important concept called as a stack where a stack is also a memory which is being used in the user space. So, in the user space where we are trying to talk about RAM memory area 640k we need to use the stack. What is a stack? Stack is a section of a read write memory used by the CPU to store the information temporarily. So, what type of data is being stored by on the top of the stack by the CPU? So, whenever you call a subroutine program there is the content of the instruction pointer and code segment will be stored on the top of stack. Similarly, when you are trying to call an interrupt the processor pushes the instruction pointer on the top of the stack, code segment on the top of the stack and also the flag, flag register on the top of the stack. So, we will know more in detail when you are trying to talk about or learn more about the system henceforth, but for the time being we will just talk about the operation of the stack and understand how the stack works. This is a basic uh, example which is trying to be projected here to make you understand the process of the stack operation. The stack usually uses the push and pop instruction which is available in the instruction set for the user to use in their instruction set. Push is an instruction used to store the data that are in the register on the top of the stack. Pop is an instruction that is used to retrieve the data from the top of the stack. So, what is a stack? Stack is a memory location and this particular memory location is being used by the system when you use a push instruction to move whatever is the push followed by the operand is being given. So, let us look at a simple stack memory operation as we uh, look into these slides. There are two specific registers used by 8086 processor to perform the stack operation. What are they? They are stack pointer and the other one is the base pointer. So, let us look into how these particular pointers work as you uh, stock, talk about it. So, when you are trying to look at the stack pointer and the base pointer, these are the two registers which is trying to access from the top of the stack. We have one more important point that is the segment registers which is required because the address that you have is 20 bits and these registers are 16 bits. So, the stack segment register is displaced by 4 bits added to the stack pointer always to access on the top of the stack. But if you want anything within the stack, obviously we use the base pointer to access it. Why do you require two registers, segment register and stack pointer? I just answered this particular question now. So, looking into this we try to understand how the stack works as a last in first out basis. The instruction push stores the contents of the register on the top of the stack and the pop retrieves from the top of the stack and we have a simple example which tries to talk about how this operation does. Let us look into the stack memory area assuming that 4000 is the stack segment register and 1000 is initialized to the stack pointer to start with and this is the RAM memory area what you are trying to talk about. 4000 colon 1000 is full till now. So, that means that the stack pointer must be pointing towards this particular point. So, we have a stack segment and stack pointer pointing towards 4000 colon 1000 and we start considering three registers A x, B x and R x, C x register to understand this particular process of operation. Let us assume that A x has got 1, 2, 3, 4 data and B x has got A, B, C, D hexa data and C x has got 64 D, C data. So, now when you are trying to talk about these particular data assume that all these data whatever is being stored are 16 bits and this when you are trying to talk about in binary, but since we are representing in hexa it is a 4 digit number until and unless we try to say that it is a decimal equivalent value which you assume and you need to really manage it by using certain 
operations. So, let us look at decimal adjust numbers later for the time being we will consider that all these numbers are hexadecimal number system. When a push instruction is being given what happens? So, first thing what it happens is push A x, A x has got 1234. 12 is a lower order 8 bits, 34 is sorry, uh, 12 is a higher order 8 bit, 34 is a lower order 8 bit. First, the higher order 8 bit is stored in the location 4000 colon 0 FFF after decrementing stack pointer by 1. It again decrements the stack pointer by another one and stores 34 at the location 0 FFE. So, let us look at how it happens. So, that means that there are two things that has happened after the execution of the push instruction the A x register content is being stored on the top of the stack, but the stack A x register is retained as it is, but the stack pointer is decremented by 2. The stack segment continues to be in the same value. So, B x and C x are not being disturbed and it seems to be as it is. Now, let us look at another instruction whatever you have say for example, B x instruction is being given. Push B x instruction says that it has to move the content of B x register on top of the stack. So, A B has to be stored first and then C D has to be stored. The next the S P register must be decremented by 2. So, let us look at what happens after the execution of the instruction push B. So, that means that A B is stored, C D is stored and the stack pointer is decremented by 2. Now, at the end of this particular instruction now A x and B x are stored on the top of the stack, but neither the A x and B x are disturbed, but the stack pointer is being decremented accordingly. Now, the next one is say push C x. So, now 64 D C has to be stored. So, 64 is stored on the top of the stack first and later on D C is being stored on the top of the stack and the stack pointer readjusted to point to the top of the stack. Having done this, let us look at what happens when you want to retrieve the instruction. See, if you want to retrieve the respective data into the respective registers, you have to use in the reverse order pop C x, pop B x, pop A x. Now, I will try to change the order because I would like to see what happens when you are trying to change the order of pop instruction. Now, let us say when I say pop A x, that means that the content which is there pointed by the stack point at the top of the stack is brought and loaded into A x register. After execution of the pop instruction, whatever was there in A x register 1, 2, 3, 4 is being displaced and the 64 D C will be stored there. So, 64 D C is being stored and stack pointer is incremented by 2. So, whenever you use the pop instruction, the instruct the stack pointer is incremented the top of the stack is moved to the register where it is being stored. So, that means that the register content is now removed and that from the top of the stack the data has been brought stack pointer is incremented by 2. What happens to the memory? The memory continues to contain the same thing it is not disturbed because the power is not removed we are not writing in anything into it the content on the top of the stack uh, top of the stack would continue to be the same. Now, let us use another instruction called pop P C x. Now, what did I do? I did not put in the same order reverse order in which we pushed it, we ordered it in different. So, that means that the data in the registers will also get changed. When you use pop C x, whatever is there on the top of the stack, stack that is A B C D will be loaded into C x register now and the stack pointer will be incremented by 2. So, the content of the C x register would change to A B C D and S P would be readjusted to a new value that is 0 FFE. The last one let us use the instruction say pop C, when you use the instruction pop C obviously, the content which is there on the top of the stack 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4 will be moved into this particular register and C x register and the stack pointer will be incremented by 2. So, having done this we have understood that push and pop instructions enables us to move the data on the top of the stack and retrieve at the same time the stack pointer is a pointer which points to the top of the stack and how the stack ma uh, memory works. Having understood this let us go to the addressing mode of 8086 microprocessor and later on proceed further to make the remaining things very clear before we start programming. So, whatever we have been trying to talk about is directly writing a program 
to the machine to your memory and try to execute but that's not possible because we would like to store it into a file and execute the program from the file so we'll see how that could be done in another few slides before trying to do that we like to know what is an addressing mode and how the data is going to be addressed. So, having understood this particular part it becomes convenient for us to proceed further. The term addressing mode refers to the way in which the operand of an instruction is specified. So, the operand is nothing but the data it can be specified in different ways and the way in which this particular operands are specified based on it we have different addressing modes. Information contained in the instruction code is the value of the operand or the address of the results of the operand. So, let us look at it as we go into the details. So, we are trying to talk about the addressing modes what we have as register addressing mode, immediate addressing mode, relative addressing mode, implied addressing mode. These are the four major addressing modes which we are trying to talk about when we say register addressing mode obviously we have the operands available in the instruction register itself when you say immediate in the instruction itself we have the immediate data relative relative to the present position of the instruction pointer we go to a particular location and start it is called as relative implied is saying that is in the instruction itself is understood what is happening what are the operand is being used. So, let us talk about this with some examples later let us go to the remaining addressing modes whatever we have. We have memory reference addressing mode memory referencing addressing mode basically talks about way in which the data is being accessed from the memory location we have direct memory addressing we have register indirect addressing we have base relative addressing we have index relative addressing we have based index addressing mode. Now, we will look into each one of them with an example before that we have the last two important I O reference instructions or uh, uh, modes addressing modes they are direct addressing mode and indirect addressing mode. So, let us talk about register addressing mode and proceed further. A register addressing mode involves the use of register to hold the data to be manipulated. Register addressing mode is generally the most compact and the fastest execution because the registers are available within the CPU. So, that means that no bus cycles are run. Whenever we are trying to talk about any instruction outside the CPU, the time taken is much higher. It is always preferable to have the data within the register. Hence, the more number of register, the better it is. But whatever is the register available in 8086, we need to manage with it. And so, we will look at how we go about and what we try to do in these registers. So, when you are trying to talk about the registers, we have 16 bit registers like AX, BX, CX, DX, SI, DI, SP and BP. And when you talk about 8 bit registers, we talk about AL, AH, BL, BH, CL, CH, DL, DH. So, when I am trying to talk about an example as add AX, comma BX, here both the operands are registers. So, the content of AX is added to the content of BX and stored back into AX. So, whenever there is the data available in one of the registers, we call this one as register addressing mode. Example which has been mentioned as add ax comma bx similarly increment cx talks about the register cx contains the data and that is being incremented by one and stored back into cx register the next addressing mode is immediate addressing mode in immediate addressing mode the source operand must be a constant so that means that we are trying to talk about the data being provided by the program in the instruction itself so, since it is available in instruction itself, it is called as an immediate addressing mode. The data may be either 8 bits or 16 bit long. Data cannot be loaded into the second segment registers and flag registers. So, using this addressing mode, it is not possible to move the data into segment register. It is being repeatedly said because most of the time students get confused and say that move data segment comma 3000. So, saying that 3000 is the address to be loaded it cannot be moved because immediate addressing mode is not supported by uh, the microprocessor to move the data into segment register. Immediate operands can be 
access quickly because they are available directly from the instruction queue. So, that means that whenever you are trying to talk about the operation of a microprocessor, the opcode is brought and loaded into the 6 byte queue in case of 8086 and 4 byte queue in case of 8088. Once it is in the queue, it directly flows from the queue itself and hence it is faster. Example of uh, this particular immediate addressing mode is add register comma 0 a 54. So, this means that 0 a 4 is to be moved into a register example add c x comma 0 0 2 3 add the contents of uh, c x into 2 0 0 2 3 and store the result back into c x. Relative addressing mode as I have already mentioned relative is related to a particular place. So, the relative with respect to the present pointer that is the instruction pointer is what is a relative addressing mode. Instruction using this mode of addressing specifies the operand as an 8 bit relative displacement to program counter. PC is nothing but the program counter, but invariably we talk about the instruction pointer in the case of 8086 microprocessor. But general term what is being used as a program counter because it is a program which is point to the instruction that is being next executed. So, this particular situation whenever the program is to fetch a part go to a particular location say for example, jump start it what it does is the present content of the instruction pointer is taken added with the 8 bit of the signed value number and then goes to that particular location for execution in the program. So, it is related to the present position of the instruction pointer hence it is called as relative addressing mode. Implied addressing mode directly talks about a situation where there is no operand given in the instruction. So, this is a 0 operand instruction without any operand it is supposed to do say for example, CLC. CLC stands for clear clarify flag. So, instruction using this mode has no operands and the operands used to perform the operation is understood depending upon a particular instruction. Implied addressing mode basically means that it is understood by the instruction that it is supposed to perform the operation on a particular operand which is not mentioned as an operand in the instruction. So, in this particular case clear carry flag is one particular uh, mnemonic and in this particular there is no operand it is the carry flag which is understood by the instruction itself. So, let us look into the remaining uh, addressing modes which is related to memory. There are quite a number of addressing modes which we need to really understand. We will finish this particular part in today's uh, lecture regarding the way in which you can address the different memory locations. So, first one is direct memory addressing mode. The effective address is taken directly from the displacement field of the instruction. It is the simplest memory addressing mode say for example, add temp comma C L. So, how does the microprocessor know temp is a memory location? What is the value of temp? So, we are trying to talk about temp as a location of memory and this is understood by the assembler by using some assembler directive. We will talk about the assembler directive shortly, but for the time being let us assume that temp is a particular memory location. So, it says that add the content of the temp memory location with the content of AL CL register and store result back into the memory location called temp. But instead of trying to talk about something like this INC 1 2 3 4 which is in bracket. So, within the bracket when you say something it says that it is a particular memory location from where you have to access the data and in this particular case INC says that increment the content of 1 2 3 4 and store it back into the location 1 2 3 4. The next one is say for example, we are trying to talk we are trying to talk about the next uh, addressing mode uh, which e is uh, uh, register indirect addressing mode and this is quite important because whenever we were trying to talk about accessing a memory location the address of that particular memory location is available in a register. In this mode the address of the memory location where the operand resides is held in the register. The register held for this purpose are SI, DI, BP and BX. DS register is the default segment register. Whenever we are trying to talk about accessing the memory location for accessing the data, data segment would be the default segment register. So, 
example mu C L comma S i which is there in bracket within bracket whatever is being given it says that is it is an indirect addressing mode. So, it fetches the memory content pointed by by S i that means, the whatever is the value available in S i it takes that and fetches the data base relative addressing mode. This is an addressing mode in which it effective address is being taken from the base register and added with it either an 8 bit or a 16 bit data. So, in this particular case an example what we have is mu c x comma b x plus 10. So, within the bracket we put b x plus 10. So, it can be written in this way or it can also be written as b x within bracket 10. So, that means it says that add the content of 10 to b x go to the particular memory location whose address is data segment colon b x plus 10 bring that particular data move it into c x register. So, that means that it is possible for it to move the data uh, from the memory location the way it is going to move is data segment colon b x e b x plus 10 is loaded into c l register and the next 10 plus 1 b x plus 10 plus 1 is loaded to c h register. Similarly, we can say move a l comma 25 hexa within bracket b p the content of memory location whose address is calculated data segment colon b p plus 25 is brought and loaded into a l register. So, index relative addressing mode. So, whenever we try to talk about the index relative addressing mode we try to talk about only these two registers that is b x and d i register obviously, the default segment register is data segment mu d x comma s i plus phi. So, that means that the constant is added to s i and fetches the data from the particular memory location and stores it into d x register. So, base index addressing mode. So, that means that the content of the base register index register and the displacement are being added then whatever is the address is we get that is the uh, effective address. Then we have a segment register which we have uh, called uh, as uh, data segment. So, data segment colon the content of this would be the total physical address fetches the data and puts it into the C L register. So, these are some of the important points which you will have to really understand saying that there is specific set of segment registers which is used with the offset register say for code segment always it is the instruction pointer for data segment it is always the source index destination index and b x register for extra segment it is S i source index destination index and b x register and stock uh, stack segment it is b p and s p register. But it is possible for us to override this particular operation when I say it can override it means that we can directly say that we do not want data segment we want extra segment to be used to fetch the data from the memory location extra segment colon b x it is possible. Here is a simple example which gives you an override operation as mu a l comma e extra segment colon within square bracket b x. So, the content of b x is taken and extra segment is the uh, segment register which is now added to and the total content is fetched from the memory and loaded into l register. So, it is possible to override such type of operation perform the required operation. Now, having mentioned all these set of addressing modes uh, till now we are in a position to really understand saying that it is possible for us to perform the operation of getting memory location uh, content and adding it. Similarly, when you are trying to talk about the two instructions what we have that is the I O instruction which we call one as direct addressing mode where whenever we are trying to talk about an I O it means that it has to use only two instruction called in and out instruction. So, the in instruction will say that fetch the data from an device I O device and put it into either A L register from the device the device can be anything starting from 0 0 to f f. Similarly, whenever you want to send the data from the microprocessor to the external world it can be any device from 0 0 to f f to a l register. Since, the address 
of the I O device is mentioned 0 0 to f f it can be 0 0 or it can be 0 1 that means that we can have something round about 8 bits this process in which we are trying to give an 8 bit address for the I O device is direct I O addressing. But actually 8086 microprocessor can have 0 0 0 0 2 f f f f I O devices. So, what happens in case of this type of system is it the lower order 8 bits is duplicated and makes is double and then fetches it. But if you want to give a 16 bit address it is register indirect I O addressing mode say for example, when you want to do this in a l comma within bracket we will have to use d x register. If you remember right in the beginning of the class we mentioned that d x register is used for fetching the I O. So, the same instruction holds good here too. With this I complete today's portion in the next class we will try to talk about assembly language programming in greater detail and how to program and what are the assembler directives and simple programs can be taken up. Thank you.